Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The first big six match of the season took center stage when Spurs hosted City. Pep was looking for a fast start, whilst Nuno is looking to implement his style on a new team. After 90 minutes, the game finished 1 0 to Spurs thanks to a customary Son goal against City. The XG told a familiar story of City vs Spurs, with Spurs being clinical and City wasteful, 2.11 to 1.06. The XG time map shows that City were generally on top, but couldn't make it count. But what tactics were on show? Let's take a look. A quick reminder of the formations used by both sides, as seen on the OneFootball app. OneFootball will get you match updates, formation updates, as well as player and team stats, and so much more. And the best part is, you can get it absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. We'll look at City in possession, as they dominated on the ball. Spurs weren't really looking to press high up the pitch, so City were usually able to find the centre-backs fairly early. The lack of press shows in Spurs' passes per defensive action. Spurs were determined to stop City from building up through the centre of the pitch though, and were quite successful in doing so. This was because rather than building in a 4-2-3-1, Spurs opted for a 4-3-3 and an extremely narrow front three in that shape during the defensive phases as it gave them several defensive advantages. In the build-up phase, initially, City pushed their free eights high into the half spaces, as usual, with Grealish being high down the left and Gundogan down the right-hand side, whilst the wingers kept the width so that City had a front five. So Spurs' narrow front three made it difficult to get the ball into Fernandinho in the centre, who was the sole pivot and the centre of Guardiola's team, as the cover shadow of the front three would effectively cut off the passing lane. At the same time, if Spurs had lined up in a 4-2-3-1, the double pivots would have had trouble tracking the men in the half spaces, which could have opened up more space for Ferran to drop into. Using a flat three in midfield instead meant that Hoiberg and Ali could pick up the free eights, while Skip could protect this region. And initially, Cancelo was deep in the build-up, creating a back three, as they may have anticipated that the Spurs front three would be pressing the centre-backs much more, so Cancelo could have been an extra option. At the same time, Mendy would invert right in alongside Fernandinho in order to provide an extra option to get the ball past the first line of pressure. So City were building in a 3-2-5, which did have its advantages on the ball. But quickly, Pep realised that Spurs' front three weren't actually pressing, so having three men deep was a bit of a waste. This led to a slight change in tactics, which gave City many advantages on the ball, but also cost them dearly and led to defensive instability. City switched to a two at the back during the build-up, consisting of the centre-backs. Fernandinho reverted to being a single pivot, whilst Mendy and Cancelo were a part of the midfield now, primarily taking up the half spaces. This shows in the average positions, so City were now building up in a 2-3-5. On the ball, it gave City one major problem, as they now only had a single pivot to stop the counter-attack when they were higher up, as Mendy was no longer assisting Fernandinho. The Spurs' narrow front three would also mean that Bergwijn and Lucas could easily drop deeper to outnumber Fernandinho, so whenever there was a turnover, when City used this shape, Spurs would immediately be running at City's back two, when Cancelo was high. And often, Spurs were able to outnumber the City defence. And this happened on quite a few occasions. And in fact, we see a lot of this in the goal. City are again building up with their usual shape to begin with, with Fernandinho being the sole pivot and the fullbacks higher but wider in the midfield. There is eventually a turnover and Mendy and Cancelo are higher in these positions, so Fernandinho is isolated in the centre. Lucas and Bergwijn are deep, meaning that Fernandinho is 2 vs 1 down in the midfield. Lucas draws Fernandinho and plays in Bergwijn, 
who once passed Fernandinho, is running at the centre-backs with Son in support. Bergwijn finds Son, who eventually scores. But City also benefited from this shape. Firstly, it meant that Fernandinho could be found much more often, as the narrow Spurs front three meant that Cancelo and Mendy were free, and as discussed, the Spurs midfield three were fairly deep, so the centre-backs could easily find a fullback who could then play it into Fernandinho behind that first line of pressure for the next play. So the fullback's positioning meant that they saw plenty of the ball, ending with the most touches for City. But it also allowed them to better manipulate the Spurs midfield. In the default shape, Gundogan and Grealish were covered, but when the fullbacks received the ball, they now had a 2 versus 1 advantage in the half space. Down the right, if Ali decided to remain deeper on Gundogan, Cancelo often used this space to look for Ferran's run in behind the centre-back, as the centre-back would also have eyes on Gundogan. But if Ali came on to Cancelo, quick passing would now find Gundogan in space. Down the left-hand side, similar tactics were employed, but Mendy is much worse on the ball, so when he was pressed he could lose the ball more easily and was a bit of a press target. But down the left, when Grealish was in the half space, Tanganga could initially be drawn narrow so the centre-backs could then go for direct switches into Sterling, or Grealish if they switch positions. However, Spurs were quite efficient in then shifting across, and Tanganga for the most part held the zone and stopped progress down the left. But City did favour this left-hand side, with the trio of Mendy, Sterling and Grealish in constant rotation. With the winger high when defending, the runs through the half space would open up space for the winger to drive higher up the pitch to create, which led to some good situations. Alternatively, a ball into the half space runner could get in behind Spurs, but City couldn't make the most of this. Overall, Nuno will be delighted with the early season win and will hope it sets the tone for the rest of the season. Pep on the other hand will take note of the lack of cutting edge, a problem that City often had. But he will be conscious of City's slow start last season and will hope that this turns out to just be a blip. But what did you make of the match? A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. And a special special thanks to my patrons, including Zane Barber and Adidev Guru for their support on the Ultra tier. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.